Hey friends, welcome back to another baking video in my kitchen. I have been working on this recipe for a couple of months now. I started working on it before Thanksgiving. I made a version of it for Thanksgiving dinner that was good, but it still needed a little bit of work. And I recently made a discovery that has um, taken this recipe to a level that I am ready to share it. And I think it's actually one of my absolute favorite egg bread creations thus far. So not too long ago, I shared a video about butter buns, which is also one of my favorite recipes. But with the discovery that I made making these olive rolls, I may adjust the butter bun recipe and do like a butter bun 2.0. So since I gave up dairy for the month of January, I was looking to make a butter bun type bun that was dairy free. So I was looking online for some different options and I came across olive oil powder, and this is the one. I, there weren't a lot of options for olive oil powder online, and this is the best option I found. But if you look at the ingredients, you'll see that it's not just olive oil powder that is the ingredient. Um, there's six grams of olive oil in there, and six grams of gum Arabic, or gum Arabic, I'm not sure how exactly to say it. But from my research, I have found that gum Arabic is the same thing as the acacia fiber powder that I used in a previous experiment video. It can be called acacia fiber or acacia powder or gum acacia or acacia arabic or arabic. It comes from the sap of an acacia tree and it's very high in fiber and it's used in a lot of recipes. So this supplement, it's not just an olive oil powder, it's a olive oil it's a super powder with olive oil and prebiotics, which is the uh, gum Arabic. I wanted to try just as much olive oil powder as possible, but this is the closest I could find to that. And actually it turned out to be great because the acacia or the gum Arabic added with the olive oil powder at the end actually gave the rolls an incredible texture. These rolls are the first ones of the egg bread creations that I would consider to have a doughy feel in my mouth. Um, when you bite into them, it just kind of has that doughiness that you want from a dense roll. So even though I wasn't looking to develop this recipe with the acacia or the gum arabic, um, it turned out that it was a great discovery and that's what I may be doing with my butter bun recipe. I may experiment with adding some acacia fiber or acacia powder at the end of the recipe, um, not mix it in at the beginning, and get those butter buns to even more of a doughy, like dense roll consistency. Now I know that a lot of you guys have already bought a lot of different ingredients for your egg white bread and you're not looking to buy something else. So what I did after I perfected this recipe, I, instead of using this super powder with the olive oil and the acacia, I did a couple of test batches, one where I used half MCT oil powder and half acacia fiber instead of this, and another one where I used half butter powder and half acacia fiber instead of this, and I got the same results. So if you have butter powder or if you have MCT oil powder and if you have the acacia fiber, you should be able to recreate this recipe and not have to buy the olive oil powder. I do like the flavor of the olive oil powder. If you smell it, it just you know has that olive oil smell and it's really nice. But if you don't want to go buy something else, there are ways to substitute it out. Okay, let's go over the ingredients real quick and then we will whip these up and get them in the oven. First thing is gonna be one and a quarter cup of warm water. It should just be warm to the touch, not scalding. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of active dry yeast and a teaspoon of honey. And as always, the honey and the yeast addition are optional. They don't add to the texture necessarily. They just give that little bit of a yeasty smell and yeasty taste that you want from bread, uh, but it is totally optional. You can omit those. Then I will be adding 100 grams of egg white powder, half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, two tablespoons of allulose, a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum, and this is also optional, arrowroot powder. I'm only gonna add a tablespoon to the recipe. It adds about 
a um, little less than one carb per roll. But I will mention that I made this recipe with no arrowroot and with the addition of the acacia fiber, I still got a really good texture. I think the arrowroot takes it just, you know, all the way to the next level and it tastes a little bit better, but it is optional. You can leave that out and you still get a really, really good finished product. I'm also going to add three ounces of chopped Kalamata olives. I used the Trader Joe's sliced Kalamata olives and I do like to drain these and then just dry them a little bit with a paper towel so they're not completely sopping wet when I put them into the batter. And then I have two tablespoons of chopped fresh rosemary. And then in the middle of cooking I will be brushing with two tablespoons of olive oil and uh, sprinkling with some sea salt flakes. First thing I'm gonna do is add my five grams or one teaspoon of honey to the bowl. And then I'm just gonna put in my warm water and stir it to get the honey to dissolve. Now I'm gonna sprinkle my one teaspoon of yeast over the top and I'm gonna let this sit for about three to five minutes to um, let the yeast bloom a little bit. While the yeast is blooming, I'm going to get my dry ingredients uh, measured out here so I can just throw them all in together. I'm going to do 100 grams of the egg white powder, egg white protein powder, dried egg whites. They're all the same thing. Usually there's just the one ingredient of egg whites. Sometimes there's sunflower lecithin in the ingredients. If you do have one that has sunflower lecithin, it may take longer to whip up. Um, I have found that when I've used the ones with sunflower lecithin. Next, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but I'm adding a half a teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons of allulose, and that comes to 18 grams. Good enough. One quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum. And totally optionally, one tablespoon of arrowroot starch, arrowroot flour, arrowroot powder, it's all the same thing. And that comes to eight grams. Now that my yeast is done blooming, I'm just throwing all of the powdered ingredients except for the olive oil powder, of course, because you can't add, add any fat at this point. But all the rest are gonna go into the bowl here. And before I start that mixing, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 325. I'm gonna start my mixer out on low and slowly increase the speed until I'm at maximum and then whip it at max speed for five minutes. It has been whipping for five minutes, and now I'm gonna add the next three ingredients. First is about three-fourths of a cup of chopped Kalamata olives, or three ounces. Oh, I almost forgot. If you want them to look really pretty, save a few olives out, and then you can pop those right on the top, and it makes the rolls look really nice. You don't have to save very many, just a few. And then same thing with the rosemary. I'm gonna put all but a little bit that I will use to sprinkle on the top. Save that. Now for the keto super powder, I am adding 36 grams of this and that comes to about six tablespoons or one fourth of a cup plus two tablespoons. They have a handy dandy scoop in here. And so this is the part where if you have acacia powder and um, MCT oil powder or butter powder, you can do three tablespoons of each of those or 18 grams of each of those. Good enough. Now I'm just gonna mix this on low until everything is incorporated. One great thing about the acacia fiber at the end I have found is that it kind of stabilizes the batter here at the end so it doesn't deflate really fast and it gives you a little more time to work with it and it holds its shape so well that if you wanted to do these free form on a pan rather than using a silicone mold, I think it would work out just fine. You could probably do a carnivore angels trick of um, using the ice cream scoop on a pan if you would like to do it that way. I just realized I forgot to add one ingredient. Let me grab it. I am adding a half a teaspoon of granulated garlic and it's not enough to make these taste 
really garlicky. It's just enough to give it a little bit more savory flavor. I found it really enhanced everything else. The garlic, the rosemary, and the olives, just perfect together. Just gonna make sure everything at the bottom got all mixed in. I'm gonna be using this hamburger bun silicone pan, and it is the one that is shallower. You could use the deeper one, just don't fill them all the way. And I have actually stopped um, spraying them. I did a test batch where I didn't spray them and they still came off really well. And I will be brushing the tops with olive oil and the olive oil kind of goes all around anyway. And so it gets a little oil on the bottom. So I have found that spraying is just unnecessary. Now I'm gonna just divide this batter into my six wells. I said six wells when it's obviously eight wells. I think my brain is not quite firing on all cylinders today. <laughs> I just like to kind of swirl the tops a little bit to try to make the buns as pretty as possible. I do like how the acacia fiber stabilizes the batter because I feel like I have more time to make it pretty. Now I'm just gonna add three or four olives to the top of each of these rolls and then I'll sprinkle with the rosemary and it'll just make it look so gorgeous. A little sprinkle of rosemary. All right, my oven is preheated. I'm gonna pop these in for 15 minutes. While the rolls are baking, I just got my two tablespoons of olive oil ready to brush on when it's time and I have my sea salt flakes ready to go. I also wanted to show you the ingredients I experimented with when I was trying to substitute out the olive oil powder. This is the acacia fiber powder that I used. This is the MCT oil powder that I used. And then this is the butter powder that I used. Different brands can have different effects. So I just wanted to show you the exact ones that I used. I'll put links to everything down below. But if you don't want to buy the um, olive oil super powder, uh, you can use half acacia, three tablespoons of the acacia fiber, and three tablespoons of either MCT oil or butter powder. These have been in here for 15 minutes. Now I'm just gonna spread this two tablespoons of olive oil evenly over all eight buns. Now just a little sprinkle of flake salt on each one and then these will go back into the oven for about 10 minutes. All finished, here is how they look fresh out of the oven. They're firm, they shouldn't be gushy. They still kind of have a little bounce to them, but they shouldn't be gushy at all. And they are the absolute best while they are still warm. I would recommend letting them cool for maybe five to 10 minutes. And that's when they taste super, super yummy. Like I said, this is the first recipe that I would describe as having a doughy texture when you bite into it. It really melts in your mouth and is very easy to swallow. I know that's a funny thing to say, but for those of you that have had other egg white breads that are difficult to swallow, you know what I'm talking about. That's something that I really think the acacia fiber helps with. Also the addition of the xanthan gum too helps with that hard to swallow effect of the egg white protein powder. I find these extremely easy to eat, not only because of the soft doughy texture, but also because they're so flavorful and delicious. There's enough fat in there from the olive oil, the powdered olive oil, and the olive oil on top, and then the moisture from the olives as well, and then the flavor of the spices, the garlic and the rosemary and the flake salt. Oh my gosh, these are so good. After they cool off for another minute, I will show you the inside texture. So you can see these come away from the pan really easily. Hardly any sticking at all. Look really nice on the bottom. I love that texture that the pan gives. All right, so I'm gonna show you the inside here. And you'll notice that the texture of the bread is a little bit denser than um, like the way I make my loaves. And so I don't recommend making a loaf out of this recipe. I think it works best for these kind of buns because the center is more doughy, like I mentioned. Um, it, you don't want like a really thick amount of that doughiness. You want more crust to dough ratio, if that makes sense. But that denser texture works really well in this recipe. It's kind of reminiscent of a biscuit. It's not like a flaky pastry biscuit, but um, 
There was a type of biscuit that we used to get as kids. It was like the cheaper, like skinny rolls of biscuits. And they, they didn't have the layers, but they were kind of bready. And that's what this texture reminds me of a lot. All right, I'm gonna take a bite and show you what it looks like um, after I take a bite. Cause you'll see kind of how it mushes down and how it's like doughy. So you see how it like mushed? It didn't like spring back up like a sponge. Um, that is the doughiness that I'm talking about. And oh my gosh, it is so good. The mouthfeel on these is incredible. So the first time after I got this recipe just right, I ate like three of these for a meal. Like that was my entire lunch. I, it was just so easy to keep eating. They were so good. But then they only have about 130, I think 135 calories per bun. And um, if you omit the arrowroot, they have 3.1 grams of carbs per bun. But um, if you add the arrowroot, it go comes up to four grams of carbs per bun. So they are kind of a special occasion thing. They're a little bit higher on the carbs. The olives, you know, add some carbs. The arrowroot adds a little bit of carbs. The rest of the carbs pretty much come from the acacia fiber. And I know some people count total carbs, including fiber, and some people count net carbs minus fiber. So if you count net carbs, it's even lower than that 3.1 or 4 gram mark. As far as storage, I keep these in an airtight container in the fridge and they do get moist on the top after they've been stored. The oil and the um, salt kind of add to that. So that's why I say they're the best right out of the oven. But I found that if you stick them in the air fryer for like 30 seconds, they cook super fast if you forget about them, which I have done and they come out black. But if you put them in there at 400 for about 30 seconds, um, they come out just like, or very close to fresh out of the oven texture, even if they've been stored for a couple of days. So that is my olive rosemary roll recipe. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for hanging out in the kitchen with me today, and I will see you again in another video. All right, Autumn, what's your assessment? You're a professional. With sandwich bread. artist oh, yes. professional with bread. you bake bread for a living at subway and it's better than subway bread it's better than subway bread you heard and it here first healthier yes that's what i meant oh so better in that it's healthier or better in that it tastes in, better overall in a whole both in health and taste with it tasting delicious and being super healthy it's better than egg bread i mean subway <laughs> this is better bread. than subway subway bread as a whole okay Taking in all the factors. Just but this is a thumbnail. <laughs> and then you have like, can't believe it's not bread. Subway worker? <laughs> subway worker subway, approves. A subway worker approves of this bread. Yeah, you need to make a new brand that's called, I can't believe it's not bread. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will. I think I will. No, call it. Wait, this isn't bread? <laughs> like one of those knockoffs of Can't Believe It's Not Oh, bread? like that you would find at grocery outlet? Yeah. Yeah.